Hey everyone, this is Nick and one thing that comes back often in the comments of my videos is when will Linux be finally able to run Android applications? One thing I also often see in the comments is an answer to that saying why would you even need Android apps on Linux? It's a desktop. But making a video about running Android apps on Linux is far more interesting than making a video telling you why you don't need Android apps on Linux. So here we are and we're going to talk about WayDroid. It's a solution that lets you run your Android apps directly on Linux with near native performance. It's still in development though and it's not perfect. What's perfect though is the fact that today's sponsor is gonna let you get a free study on the state of the security on Linux. This video is sponsored by Tuxcare, but this time I'm not going to talk to you about their services to handle and manage your Linux server fleet. This time they want you to take a look at a report that they sponsored about Linux security best practices. This research was conducted by the independent Ponemon Institute and the results which are freely downloadable will let you benchmark your processes against a set of best practices. For example, research shows that organizations spend about 1,075 man hours monitoring and patching systems each week, including 340 hours of downtime to apply those patches. 45% of respondents also indicated that their organization has no tolerance for system patching downtime. Of course, that's a problem that Tuxcare solves with their live patching services, but if you want to learn more about Linux security best practices, how to implement them in your organization, head over to the link in the description below and download the full report for free. No strings attached. Okay, let's begin with a quick explanation of what WayDroid is, because Android is based on Linux, right? It uses the Linux kernel, so applications made for Android should have no issues running on Linux, right? Well, no. See, Android only uses a Linux kernel. That's also not very close to the kernel we use in our Linux desktops. Apps themselves run on a Java virtual machine called Dalvik. This means that apps are isolated from the OS itself and cannot do whatever they want. That's good, that's secure, but it also means that Android applications need a specific runtime to be able to talk to the kernel, which is called the ART, Android Runtime. And then the Linux kernel used in Android also has very specific features that you cannot find in the mainline Linux kernels that we use on our desktops. And then there's also the fact that the Linux graphics system with X11 or Wayland has nothing in common with the thing that Android uses to display graphics on a screen, which means that Android apps just don't know how to display themselves on your Linux desktop or laptop. This is why running Android apps on another system than Android requires a container, like what WayDroid implements. WayDroid is based on a version of Lineage OS, which is based on Android 10 and it can access any needed hardware. It can run Android apps on x86 or ARM CPUs. It's fully open source. It can add your Android apps to your menu. It can display apps in their own windows or full screen. It can display the Android UI for navigation and it has near native performance. One caveat, WayDroid only runs, as its name kind of implies, on Wayland. If your distribution or if your system is using x.org, then you're out of luck. You can move to Wayland though, because it's pretty much ready these days, as long as you're on Intel or AMD graphics. If you're using Nvidia drivers, there are still a bunch of issues. Ubuntu actually did a U-turn on making Wayland the default for Nvidia graphics, so yeah. But that doesn't really matter either, because there's a second caveat, which is that WayDroid doesn't really run on Nvidia GPUs. It works with Mesa drivers, so it's gonna work with Intel and to some extent some AMD cards, but apparently not all work as well. I personally ran it on my laptop with a Ryzen 7 4800H and its integrated graphics, which are made from AMD, and it works really well. So your mileage may vary, but generally Intel cards seem to be the preferred way to run this thing. WayDroid can be easily installed on Ubuntu or Debian through the addition of a repository all the instructions are on their website. I'll leave the link in the description. You can also install it on Fedora through a copper repo. I left a link to the instructions in the description of the video as well. And it's also in the AUR if you're using an Arch-based distribution. 
Once you get it installed properly, then you'll need to initialize WayDroid by typing in the terminal sudo WayDroid init. This changes depending on the distribution you're using. I know that for Fedora, I had to type a different command line. Again, I left the link to the full install instructions in the description of the video. Just check it out if you need to have a step-by-step -step process. Once WayDroid is installed and initialized, then you need to start the system service that lets it do its job. You'll need to open the terminal and type sudo systemctl start waydroid-container. So systemctl is a command that lets you interact with services on your Linux desktop. The start argument tells it to start a specific service and waydroid-container is the name of the service you want to start. And once that's done, you can launch waydroid from your applications menu. If it's not there for any reason, you can also start it using the command line by typing waydroid show dash full dash UI. Not exactly a one-click install, and this kind of program is really one that would benefit from being packaged as an app image, as a flat pack, or dare I say it, as a snap. Command line is fun and powerful, but GUI is better. Now you can start throwing rotten vegetables at your screen. I'm not the one cleaning that up. Once WayDroid is installed and open, you should notice a full screen user interface appearing, which resembles the Android UI on a tablet, for example. Your mouse should also work. You can click and hold to drag stuff around. And if you do that from the bottom of the screen, you'll see that there's an app drawer, which is kind of empty. So let's try to remedy that. WayDroid lets you install .apk applications, which you can download online relatively easily. But to begin with, you might want to get an app store, which will make this process a lot simpler. Let's go with FDroid, which has tons of open source applications for Android that will also work on WayDroid. So head over to fdroid.org and download the APK file. Then open a terminal and type WayDroid app install and then the path to your APK file and hit enter. You will then have to restart the system service for WayDroid using the previous command, sudo systemctl start waydroid-container. Your app should now be added to your applications menu and you can open it through there. From FDroid, you can then install any application you want and they'll also get automatically added to your applications menu, no more command line needed. Of course, at first install, you'll need to enable installing applications from an untrusted source, like on a real Android device. You can also head over to the Android settings and add your language or keyboard language to make things easier because by default everything will be in English. You can also completely disable the on-screen keyboard which you shouldn't really need on a laptop or a desktop. Just head over to the settings to apps and notifications, click all apps, then Android keyboard and click disable. Technically, you should be able to enable a multi-window mode on WayDroid, especially on GNOME. It doesn't seem to work well on other desktop environments with other window managers. This mode should let have each Android app its own little window that's floating on top of your regular Linux desktop instead of having a full screen Wayland or WayDroid interface. The thing is, it never worked for me. It prevented WayDroid from even starting when I enabled this feature. But you can still try it on your end by typing in a terminal WayDroid prop set persist.waydroid.multi underscore windows true. Maybe you'll be more successful than I was. Now, you might not find everything you want on FDroid. And fortunately, there is a way to install Google Apps and the Google Play Store on WayDroid. It's a small Python script called WayDroid Extras. I left a link to the install instructions below. It's not an easy one-click install by any means, and you will have to run multiple command lines, install a few packages on your distro, register a fake device with Google, clear the Play Store cache, install Magisk, and more. Once all of that is done though, you do get a fully functional Android system, complete with Google Apps and the Google Play Store. You can log in with your Google account and use WayDroid as a full Android system. Apps that require the Google Play services will also work, including YouTube, Google Maps, Gmail, and a lot more. You will also be able to download apps that you might already have purchased in the Play Store on an Android device, if you so choose. 
I couldn't find certain apps in the Play Store though, like Netflix, for example, which might be a problem with identifying which country I'm in and which apps it want to offer me. Some applications would also crash at startup, like Amazon Prime Video. Xbox Game Pass worked to a point. I could navigate the UI and launch a game with xCloud, but after that, games would just not display anything, sticking to a black window, which I had to quit to resume using Waydroid. My banking app also failed, with an error message telling me the service wasn't available. Twitter worked perfectly, Duolingo also did, although it opened in portrait mode. Now that's the bane of most Android apps. Developers generally tend to make them only for phones, because Android tablets are just not a thing in terms of market share. So apps will open in portraits, but displayed sideways on your landscape display. Probably multi-window mode should fix that and display your portrait apps in portrait on your Linux desktop. But as I said, I just couldn't get that to work. Flashing G apps really does make Waydroid 10 times more appealing as long as you're okay with relinquishing basically all privacy on what you're doing with Waydroid itself. But I guess if you're already heavily dug in into the Google ecosystem, that's not really going to be an issue. Some apps also just don't work, and that's probably more on Waydroid as it's a young project and its way of handling graphics might just not be up to par just yet. Which brings us to the why. Why would you want to use Waydroid? Well, in theory, running Android apps on a desktop or laptop has plenty of use cases. You could get services that don't really work well or at all on web browsers, or services that use weird DRMs to limit what you can do. You could run games that don't exist on your platform. You could run apps that don't have the exact equivalent on Linux, like Microsoft Office or the light versions of Lightroom and Photoshop. You could test your own applications on your system, use various chat apps or some games. But that's where Waydroid kind of falls flat. Sure, you can install it, you can run Android apps, and you can even flash G apps and the Google Play Store. But it's far from an easy install process for Waydroid itself, because you have to run multiple command lines, start the service every time you reboot your computer. And there's also the fact that flashing G apps is not a simple process either. It's like 10 to 15 command lines, a 25 minute wait, stuff that you have to paste in a browser window. As I said, it's really an application or a service that would benefit from being packaged with an installer script or, or a simple experience. Because right now it's just too convoluted of a process. You could have a graphical installer with checks for G apps, for starting the service at startup, etc. And it would just do that automatically in the background for you. For now, it's just too complex to install. And once it's installed, not everything works either. It's still impressive for a relatively young project, but as long as it's still kinda hacky to install an app and then cross your fingers that it's going to work, it's never going to be a real solution for most people. I would personally use it for streaming services if they worked, with a way better experience than in the browser and higher quality video. It also has tons of potential for Linux-based phones, to enable access to a wide variety of apps that we just cannot match on our own. But again, as long as you can't just install Waydroid and Flash G apps in just a few clicks in a graphical installer, it's never going to become an Android subsystem for Linux. It's just too convoluted. If the developers manage to package it in a way simpler format, then sure, it has tons of potential. And I'm sure the last issues that it has with displaying apps or running some apps will be fixed in the future and it's going to become quite perfect. Just like today's sponsor, Slimbook. Slimbook makes laptops and desktops. They're based in Valencia, Spain. They ship worldwide, they have all keyboard layouts and they have a wide range of devices at every price point from the smallest Ultrabook laptop that's really affordable to the biggest gaming laptop you can ever find with RTX graphics in it. They have gaming towers, they have small form factor PCs, they have everything in the middle. Basically, if you have a need for a device running Linux out of the box, just click the link in the description below and I'm pretty sure that you'll find something that you're gonna love. So, thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, you can also dislike and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you absolutely, truly love this video and you want to help me make more of them, you can join my Patreon subscribers or my YouTube members. Both links are in the description. 
and both get access to the same perks, the weekly patron cast on Mondays and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!